Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So again, we're going to take a look at AI art generators and if you can somehow use that to be used in photo restoration. And I'm looking at the tool and I'm seeing benefits to it, which are going to help me and certainly going to help you if you pay attention. Now, I'm going to just bring it up here for an image that I have. This image was brought to me and as you can see it has a lot of damage to the uh, image and the person was trying to work out well how can I fix the uh, the dress on this person, the shoes, I'm having a hard time um, finding clothing of that style and doing the composite and bringing it in to, um, to blend the image together and there's a lot of people in some of these um, websites that are clearly using AI art generators, but they're literally just doing a one click. They're not really caring about what they're doing. They're just like, look at this. And it's kind of like, it's not the person anymore. Um, they've used a model, which is a Asian face or an ethnic face and it's not a, uh, a white European face, and it's just, it's cringy. But seeing that led me on a path, how did they do it? Because I'm looking at it as, if I can work out how they did it, and I can merge two things together, Paint Shop Pro, Photoshop, all the Android apps like Pixay Pro, for example, and do compositing, are bringing the images together, then I can restore something far better than I've been able to do in the past, far faster than I've been able to do in the uh, past, and without the headache of having to go through lots of Google images, find ones which are copyright free, and then composite them across. So, you're going to want to like this video, subscribe and get the bell on and please like the video. This one is, is so important to helping so many people out there with damaged photos. Um, I would love to see likes. I've not seen anyone even think of using these programs in this way. And I've not seen anyone really talk about using a program in this way, let alone show it. And of course, don't forget also to um, join the Facebook group and you can put your photos up. You can ask questions there. Um, I try to encourage artists to come in of all platforms to bring their skills to the table and openly talk about um, this sort of topic. Um, it seems to be a fringe topic. Not a lot of people want to talk about it. Uh, the other thing is a lot of people are uh, hush-hush because of their, um, the people that like likes. They don't really care about sharing their secret because they want the attention on themselves and they want people to think that they've put more work into something than they actually have. And, you know, that sort of stigma shouldn't really be there. Uh, what they're doing and what they're using is these tools which talk to a lot of people. People will work out how to use them in different ways like I am and that in turn will help more people have their photos restored and that to me is the most important. So please like, um, subscribe, Hit the bell on for notifications and share this video to your um, your social media, uh, your Facebook page and um, get the word out there. Uh, especially if you're in a photo restoration group, uh, let's show people what they can do and how these tools can be uh, beneficial to them. So yeah, we'll go to the intro now and then we'll cut over to uh, Easy Diffusion and I'll show you how you can um, use this program to benefit photo restoration. So I want to take a look at um, the AI art generators, if we can use it to fix a photo. 
Now, I'm not expecting it to be able to fix the entire photo, and um, I haven't actually used Easy Diffusion to do this yet. I did try um, Automatic 11, which is also running the Stable Diffusion um, core. Um, and yeah, what we want to try to do is we're going to try to look if we can create a new base image, which is like the original, so we can fix the image. Now, as we can see, if we come down, the dress is not got a lot of detail in it. Um, it's very degraded for the photo. There's a lot of damage, a lot of fading, perhaps water stains by the looks of it as well. So we want to see what we can do. And what we're aiming for here is to use AI to create a new base image. Before we work on any photo, I've already gone through and I've just cleaned up some of the tears a little bit. Um, I haven't done a lot of work on it. I'm not expecting perfect results. Uh, and yeah, we'll go across to um, Easy Diffusion and we'll see what we can do to create a, uh, a new base image. So yeah, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in Easy Diffusion. And what I've done is I've already opened up the image and I just gave it a quick run. So here's the image that I have opened to edit to remove some of the uh, damage to it. There is still damage here, and if we come down here and we have our prompt strength on, well, usually it's 1, and we have our guidance scale set to 1, okay, we get a 1 to 1 image. So I've downloaded a model looking for the most human looking models possible, uh, so we're not generating cartoon characters, okay. And then I've made sure that these sizes match the output size. Now, if this is a big image, it's going to take a very long time to render. I suggest make your base image small. Okay. So I've put some prompts in here, which we're going to try to work towards, and some negative prompts here. Okay. We don't want poor quality. We don't want poor hands. And we're going to hit make image, and it's going to go through. And we should pretty much see a one-to-one, -one, okay? There's no real changes between our image, okay? Now, we're going to put our prompts up here. And the stronger the prompt, there's a halfway point. There's a point where it will start ignoring your prompts. And there's a point where it will pay attention to your prompts. Now, the guidance scale here, the lower it is, it's just going to stay on this image. The higher it is, the more AI we're actually going to have. So if we go up to, um, I don't know, we'll go 5.7 there. We'll go make image. And we'll see what we get. Now, this is, it's a lot of playing around, a lot of fiddling to get where to where you want to be, okay? Now we can see here, because the uh, guidance scale is too high, we're not getting the person which is the original. So now, what? but we've got nice bags, we've got nice shoes, so we want to back that off, and we want to find that balance. So we're going to keep doing that, back it off, until we find a balance between the two. What I'm looking for is I want to use my original face and put it over top the generated image, okay? So still too much of original person, we'll take it back to three, or new person I should say. The higher that is, the more the AI will just create what it wants and it will create something based on your um, your original style of look. Okay, still too much. Take that back, we'll try two. What we are getting is we're getting great shoes, we've got a great dress. We could literally use the image down here and put the um, do a composite, so that's great that we're getting those sorts of results but we don't want it overdone where it's too strong now this is pretty good okay so we've got a fantastic dress we've got fantastic shoes you know we've got the um almost the same sort of composure there uh holding we're going to move that I might just get rid of that So we'll leave that, we'll try these, and we'll see what happens here. You may have to render it a few times to uh, try to get what you're looking for to get your image. Okay. Okay, so we're getting pretty much the same sort of result there. I'll remove that one. 
we can try try to put the prompt strength up and we'll see what happens there we're going to move this i'm going to run four images at the same time and hopefully what it will do is it will render different images for the four so we might get slight changes and variations and that will give us more of a selection to pick from We can see here that that um, prompt strength is now too high and we're hitting more issues where the, uh, the image is not like the original so we don't want that which means we need to pull that uh, prompt strength back. Um, we need to find the balance between the guidance and the prompt. So it's not to say that you couldn't use an image like this here or this here or this here and composite it to have her face on there. Um, or rather the original face on there because that's what we're looking at we're looking at just the base to composite our two images together to fix the clothing that's what we're going for okay um, that's not bad that, that is usable I'll download that one I mean it's it's very different it's very modern looking but but you could use it so I'm going to come back here I'm going to take that prompt strength back And we're just going to play with these settings a little bit by little bit until we get to what we're looking for. And uh, we'll generate another four. And we'll see what these images look like. That's definitely better. We're getting some nice clothing there. We're getting a little bit of... Um, I mean, we can see from the... Original, when we come down, she is sort of hidden by this person here. And you can see that here again. So we do lose a bit of that. Okay. Now here we go here. This is not bad. We've got the bag. We could take this image here and we can composite it onto this. We could use a bunch of images as a composite to build up our image so we could use this image here for the uh, two hands and then we can use this bottom part of the image here and I mean I'm pointing this uh, at people that actually do um, restorations so you have a nice understanding already of what I mean when I say composites okay so that's actually really really good um, what we can do here is we can pick one of these, we can say this one here, and I want to make four similar images to this. So we'll see if we can get a hand down here on this image. Probably be wise to make four similar images to this one as well. Now again, we're not looking at the faces, we don't care about that. We're looking at the overall body, because what we want to do is we're going to uh, use this to... Um, do a composite and rebuild our photo. And we don't know what happened there. So this is AI. Uh, like I said, it's almost like it's a beta. So you do get some um, really weird results. Now I could stop this, but I'm curious to see if the other results are gonna be similar to our original. Um, the problem when you do go um, make a similar image is it adjusts the guidance scale to a, a preset which is under these. Uh, we don't know what those presets are so that can create, um, yeah, we, it can create um, an issue with what we don't want. So we'll get rid of those and we'll just come back down to here and we'll just simply generate another four. Um, hello cat, holding a bag, old dress, um, two hands, oh, two hands, holding a hand bag, whoop, it's the dyslexia throwing in, thank you spell check. Okay, so I'm kind of happy where these um, guidances and um, prompt strengths are, so we'll just leave it there and we're going to run it again. 
and this is it we're just gonna this is the hard part um i mean it may seem easy but you're going to be running it over and over and over again until you find something that you can use um this is still a lot easier than finding an image on the internet uh, of this style of clothing and sitting there and doing a composite. Because even if I'm taking the images that I've saved, they're still great images opposed to using the internet that I can use far quicker and far better to create a composite. Okay? So, I mean, even this one... This one's got great shoes on it, so I can use the uh, all four images, and I can go. Well, I want these shoes here. Um, I want this handbag here, and I want these hands and this part of the body here, and I can composite it together to create the image that I'm looking for, and placing the original face back on. Okay, so we come up again, and we have almost identical to the original that's something that we do run into we'll bring that prompt strength down to two uh, i might change the guidance scale to 1.8 just for curiosity usually i work in blocks um, so 1.5 2 2.5 and so forth We can come up here. Um, detailed. Detailed old handbag. Run it again. That's actually pretty good. So you have to um, find that balance between how sharp lines that you actually want. I think that guidance scale was better at that slightly higher number. We're on two, might try 2.4 and we'll see uh, how much sharper that image is created. Run that again. I'm not happy with those ones. They're pretty much the same as the other ones that we've got. I think these ones were still our best. Okay. And we can see here our steps, our guidance scale. We could try to go more steps. Um, that's apparently going to um, do more to our image. So we'll put the steps up and we'll run that again. We'll see what the steps do. And this is what I mean. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, AI, it's cheating. And look, there are people that have obviously um, not adjusted these properly and it's pretty clear that they're putting an image in and then they're running the, uh, the AI and they're not even bothering to composite the original person's face back on. They're like, oh, this is great. I'm just going to use this one here. And they'll slap it in and it won't look anything like the original person. So that is what I'm trying to push people away from doing. I want to move people to um, looking at this as a tool and knowing how to do composites and working it from that sort of uh, direction to uh, create their image. Okay. Might just go a little bit higher on the prompt. And yeah, we'll see where this goes. So I won't keep running with this because you get an idea of what we're actually doing and you can see um, how it's affected by doing it and what I mean by you can use this as a tool with Paint Shop Pro, uh, Photoshop or the Android apps that I've shown you in the past uh, like Pixay Pro to create... A, a base or images that you can use to composite to rebuild and recreate an old photo which is badly damaged okay 
So again, I mean, that is absolutely fantastic there. Uh, this one here, the dress ain't bad. So we probably want to replace the shoes down here. I mean, it's not perfect results every single time. Um, we get different results every single time. Now, we can get rid of that there, and we can actually drag this over as our source photo. And now we have this as a source photo, which is cleaner than our original. We can use that to um, create a, a new AI image that we can still use to use as a composite with our original. So we'll come back up to the top here. And we can see that we get different results that are even more clear because the the better quality of the picture that you're feeding into this, the better quality your output that you get. For the most part. I mean, sometimes, you know, the AI just re really does a, a horrible mess. Um, again, you can crank back the prompts and the guidance scale to uh, get better images to actually work with. Um, or not better images, but more to the original image rather than giving it the um, the free liberty that it has to do what it wants. So, and we can see here, I mean, these... This one here particularly, absolutely fantastic. Um, it's how far do you want to go in creating the, the AI for, you know, the... Um, how much detail you want when you're doing the composite. Uh, I strongly recommend, you know, stick to close to the original and back it off to where it's just subtle. Um, I would think that compositing these would be better. Uh, they have a lot of the features of the original image where when you come up to one like this, you can see that um, it's very different. It's more... Um, high dynamic um, resolution but um, the person that's asking for the restoration might like that so maybe do a couple of um, composites and see what they like uh, we can just simply take this arm here we can mirror that composite it on the other side and put two hands onto the bag so I don't know if I save that one we'll do it again so there's our image there and we can see that that's it's a really great base image to do a composite with and like i said i mean we can always come down and we can take these back and say okay stop doing as much as you're doing and we can just run it over and over and over again until we get what we're looking for it's how much time and effort do you want to put into it? But I want to show where AI is a very useful tool and is becoming more useful and in the right hands of someone that it can be used in a way which is uh, more beneficial. And in photo restoration, I'm looking at this as a... A great tool that is going to save me a lot of time searching the internet trying to find someone with the clothes that that person had on in that uh, period of time and then trying to you know composite that clothing on and warping it into the uh, shape so you know this is this is a tool and it's the person using that tool which is the one that's going to make um, the image look the way they want artistically. And whether that is someone which is doing it absolutely horrible and they're just going, oh, bugger it, I'm just going to crank these up and let it do free liberty, here's your photo and it looks nothing like the original, opposed to someone that's going to put the time in and look at it the way I do, where I can use this to recomposite an image together to fix an image so there we go we'll leave it at that anyway and um, yeah I mean you can see it for yourself that this is something that can be extremely useful in the right hands and I'm showing you how you can use it 
So there it is. That's uh, Stable Diffusion's Easy Diffusion graphic user interface and how you can use it to um, as a tool to rebuild a damaged photo to use multiple images to create a composite including the original image that way you have that original person's face and you don't just do a one click AI looking completely different to uh, the original so um, if you want to see how to do a um, how to composite it uh, let me know in the comments below um, I have shown other videos on um, how to do composites and obviously if you're using Photoshop, PaintShop Pro uh, or you've seen my previous videos you already have an idea of how to do composites so that will give you an understanding of um, why this tool is important and how useful it is to doing photo restorations and let's get away from the, um, the whole you know these apps are bad these apps are a tool these programs are a tool and in the right hands they are a fantastic tool that can be used to um, help a lot of people uh, with their memories of restoring their old photos um, it is a nightmare and it is time consuming to go through and find images to um, do a composite um, this is just amazing uh, it's going to make my life so much easier and I know if you're doing photo restorations, it's going to make your life a lot easier as well. And, you know, don't forget, of course, like, subscribe, get the bell on. Most importantly, share this video to um, other, other photo restoration groups and to your social media. Um, and let's get it out there so uh, people can understand how to use this tool to actually do photo restorations and of course you know join the Facebook group um, if you've got questions and if you're wanting to learn more or perhaps you're an artist um, perhaps after seeing this video you might have a look at the other video I posted on how to actually install uh, Easy Diffusion and you might decide well I'm gonna give this a go for myself and I want to do some photo restorations join our Facebook group uh, have a look at the photos on there um, see what you can do to help someone um, the more artists on board you know the better it is for everyone um, and you know I can't be there 24 7 doing absolutely everyone's photo uh, I've got a lot going on in my life and uh, you know this week has been really really hard uh, so to get this content out uh, is not always easy and I've been wanting to bring this video to you guys for, um, well, probably a couple of weeks now. Um, I posted up that image with a, um, a composite uh, just roughly uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys how it was done. I've only just got around to doing it. And uh, yeah, so <sighs> there's not a lot of time uh, for me at the moment. And uh, yeah, but like, subscribe, get the bell on. Um, share the videos let's push and educate people on how they can use these tools to benefit and help other people and I'll of course see you in the next stream tabulous video thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end if you like my videos it really help me out if you could like and subscribe it helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.